Hey folks, welcome back to the lab. And uh, today we got to do some mayo, it's building up. So I'm going to treat you all with something that's not from AliExpress, it's from DigiKey. And it is so mundane and boring. It's a wonderful way to start off a mailbag video. It, it's, it's just two values of resistors, that's it. I had ordered uh, these resistors for the uh, linear power supply project in 20 fold transformer, but they back ordered the transformer on me and apparently it's not going to get here until mid October. So I'm rethinking some of my uh, plans for that power supply. Uh, if I tell them to keep that transformer, of course, I'm going to have to pay the $8 shipping for a handful of resistors about Oh, I don't know. Was it come out to maybe a dollar fifties worth? So, uh, we'll get, we'll get, we'll come back to that at some other point. But uh, there's some things going through my mind about that. And let me then bring it to this one here, which I already opened up because I thought it was something completely different. And it turns out it's not. It's something completely the same. <laughs> it's another one of those wonderful super capacitors but this one this time it's a 5.5 volt what they've done is they put a couple of 2.7 volt ones together with a little board that kind of uh, balances them out and what I got this one for is for one of my little 8-bit computers uh, sometimes they uh, they're in situations where there's short power failures and stuff like that and it really screws up my experiments so I thought I'd get one of these things now this is only 10 farad but those, they don't draw very much, you know, about uh, maybe 100 milliamps or something like that. So I'm hoping that this will give it enough time. Anyway, that's, uh, that's probably not something I'm going to do a video on, but uh, I just told you about it. Yet another supercapacitor. This, this one here is in the, the cell form. I got a couple in this form. Just to see which ones would be uh, which one would be most suitable for mounting onto a PC board, you know, at low profile. And uh, there's this this one. Oh, this was a 5.5 volt too. This is an alternative to that other one I just showed you there. And this this would actually be the preferred one because then I can incorporate it into the design without taking up too much vertical space. Uh, that that other one I would have to bring that back here. I would have to kind of put it on the board like that and then, oops, butterfingers. I'd have to put it on the board, bend the leads down, and then strap it down probably with a, a tie wrap or something like that. But it's still, it's still kind of a chunky thing. This one's only about half as high. Let's have a look and see what's in here. Ah, yeah, this is a, a tiny little 12 volt transformer. Just to put a tiny little power supply into something, um, for instance, something, something like this, this little device I have here. Uh, I like to power as much as I can with little linear supplies. So this has got one of one of those in it to power it. it, it you know, this this little meter here doesn't. This little meter here doesn't take much current, and this is, by the way, is a little DC load. It's it's more for uh, uh, determining the the capacity of batteries. But it can be it can be used as a little DC load, which I I use it for that all the time, and I, I configured it so that it's got a four wire and a two wire mode. I usually most mostly use it in the two wire mode, but maybe I could break that open at some point and show you guys what's inside. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see that. I get these little transformers in once in a while. I used up my last one on something that's not here that to show you, so I just got another one to have in stock for the time I need it. This one seems pretty chunky. What's in here? Ah, okay. So this here, this here's the heat sink that I got for our, our linear power supply project. This is a pretty beefy heat sink. It should get the job done. The only thing I would say about it, looking at it here, uh, is it's not very thick in this section here. Let me see if I can get that uh, that other one back here to show you. 
So here's the one I was, I was substituting in the other day. Uh, you can see that the, the fins on this one are a lot taller. And I think it's a little bit wider. No, it's, a little, it's actually narrower. And I think it's the same length, roughly. Yeah. Same length, roughly. The fins are a lot taller. So there is a lot more area here. But you can see how this one is very, very thick in here to spread the heat out more quickly. This one is quite thin. So it'll be interesting to see if this actually can keep up with the heat dissipation. I might, uh, I might add uh, like a little piece of aluminum strip in here. Mount the device up here. Mount the device down there and add the uh, an aluminum strip up here to spread out the heat a little bit quicker to the fins. Or I might just use one of these. Anyway. Oh yeah, so this is this is just another one of those uh, little webcam modules. But anyway, we've already done a, a video on these, so I won't bore you with that. But yeah, I just need to, one more of these. I might even get another one. I want to put one out, uh, pointing out towards the back there, because we did have somebody get in there. And there was a lot of stuff in there, including a, a KTM motorcycle and a tractor and stuff like that. But they, they stole shovels. They stole our shovels. Uh, yes, this is the other style. Yeah, it's also 5.5 volts. And this is only 1.5 farads. But I really got it just for the format, form factor of it, to see what it's like to design with and use. So this has got the pins like coming straight out of it like that, even though they're bent all to hell. Yeah, I don't think it'd be any difference between this and this. Other than the size, I think they're both about the same thickness, right? This one's a little bit bigger, but you know, you need to big bigger to get the extra capacity. But I think as far as uh, mounting in a PCB board, there's no real difference between the two. Now that I see them. All right. This is just colored hookup wire. For doing bodges and stuff like that it's a uh, kynar coated you know the, it's the type they use for wire wrap it's very easy to strip the kynar when you solder with it it doesn't draw back it doesn't shrink away like uh, some vinyls do and you know it's just very small i think it's 32 gauge i got here uh, i can't read it on here but i'm pretty sure that's that's what i always order for this sort of stuff so it just goes along i just got some colors that i didn't have and i am kind of running out of some of it so yeah, this, you know, this amount here lasts a long, long time. I think the last time I bought some of this stuff has to be a year or two ago. But yeah, this just goes into my stock. So we're running out of packages here. I've got uh, just this one and one more, which is good. But I have a lot more coming, unfortunately. I think there's a, there's a side of me that stays up late at night and goes on to AliExpress. Maybe kind of a dual personality thing and orders crazy amounts of stuff because I do have a crazy amount of stuff coming. What do we have here? Ah, yes, we have fuses. Fuses, fuses, fuses. These are fuses for that Simpson meter. This one here, these are the large fuses for that. Now I'm interested to see, because uh, I couldn't find anything exactly the right dimensions for this. And uh, what I did find in here was a, was a fuse wrapped in tin foil. That needs to be corrected for. Now while I didn't do it in this case, I have to be honest with you, I've done the old fuse wrapped in tin foil thing before myself, but uh, you do have to be careful with it because it's, um, it's something that gets you into a lot of trouble. So usually when I do it, I will mark, see there you go, I'll mark the device as, uh, as having um, aluminum wrapped around the fuse, so I, I'm, I'm extra careful with it. Now you see, here's the, here's the issue. These were two millimeters longer than these ones here, and a little bit smaller in diameter. So I gotta see if that'll go in there and work. Yes, it will. 
So there's plenty enough spring down there that these will work. So that's good. Now I feel, uh, I feel a little bit safer with this meter here. And I have a few spares there so I don't have to go put in tin foil. All right, here's the physically, this is the biggest package. Let's see what it's got in it. Bags within bags within bags. I know what they are. And I think I, I, I've got a good idea what these are because I know I, I ordered all that stuff on the same day. And I made sure that I ordered everything with that, you know, uh, ten dollars free shipping or ten dollar order because then it, it gets sent by AliExpress, so you get proper shipping. But these are the meters. These are the analog meters that I could put into that power supply that I'm working on. And there's the voltmeter. So it's a zero to thirty. Hmm. They use very very strong tape in China. This one's got all sorts of different tape on it. Why does that one was in two bags and one was in one bag? Oh, and they come with hardware. That's nice. And this is the ammeter, zero to three amps. Now they, these are these are inexpensive little meters. I don't know how accurate they are. Um, okay, it does zero if you hold it up. Vertically like this, it does zero, but uh, if you hold it horizontally, this is not zero, and neither one's neither is this one. But it zeroes too when you hold it up straight. I imagine though, if you take the, the lids off them, you could adjust the zero point on them. And you can do that. They got two screws on them here. So I, I you know I really like analog meters. I know you know adjusting the voltage here, it's far better to use something um, like that little digital meter that you saw in the two episodes on the power supply so far but it, it's it's really small and you know I, I really like analog meters and they're gonna fit fine like seeing this is the the size of a cabinet we're using for that now I mean these, these will fit in there fine lots of room for knobs and and terminal posts so yeah well you guys let me know um, which, which you want. I mean, I'm going to build another power supply anyway. This experience here with this Highland or this fake Highland uh, is giving me some ideas and I, I want to make something that uh, people could, could emulate or copy and get a decent power supply without going through all the headaches. Uh, but you know what? I don't, uh, to me, they're not headaches. Uh, to me, they're actually fun. This is, uh, this is what I like to do. I like to tinker around here in my lab. And I'm getting a lot of tinkering around with that Highland power supply, I tell you. This meter here is specifically for this. So there's a couple of modifications I'm going to do to this little thing. I'm going to put this meter into it. So this is a, a zero to three amp meter. It's a nice square meter, so it's easy for me to nibble out a hole. And I think it's just going to get around that big potentiometer in there and I'll just sit up there like that and I'm also going to put a fuse in it so I'm also going to put a fuse in where I, I, I can fuse it at two amps so that we don't ever because you, you get sudden you can sometimes get sudden overloads and although the wire in here and the thermal mass is kind of high you know a, a couple of seconds is all it takes to to, to blow out one of these and they're, they're not repairable and you get an overload it's uh it's over. Like, it, you have to take that $30 device, throw it away, and put another $30 device in. So putting a little fuse in um, will eliminate that. And of course, having the meter. Now these, these are interesting. Like, what, I don't do a heck of a lot of uh, breadboard stuff anymore. I do still do some. And sometimes it's really a pain in the ass getting signals in and off the breadboard. Uh, so that's why I got these. I saw these uh, a couple of years ago and I never bothered with them, but I decided now that I'd get them. So these are just little DuPont connectors that could plug into your breadboard. You know, so you can plug it into your breadboard and then attach it to like, a little motor or a little light or to another device some of some kind, whatever. It just allows for more convenient connections, I think. And I did order another set of these, but rather than alligator clips, it banana plugs on them but that order seems to have gone missing it's coming up on the, the date where 
AliExpress would have to give me my money back. So I'm not worried about that, but uh, yeah, sometimes things go missing. And this was ordered at one of those free shipping for $10 deals. The other ones weren't. The other ones were, they came with free shipping, but it wasn't AliExpress's free shipping. It was free shipping offered by the vendor. And uh, when they do it, they do it at a very, very low minimal cost. I think AliExpress have a little more op options open to them. As for instance, you know, they sent me the, the, the two meters from one vendor, the one meter from another vendor, and these things all at the same time in one package because I ordered them all at the same time on, you know, one of those $10 free shipping deals. And they sent it and it, it got here in about a week and a half. Those other ones that I ordered, the ones with the banana plugs on them, uh, I ordered those in officially five weeks and it's still not here. And these are actually pretty nice. The, the wire is a nice uh, silicone-like wire. It's just a lot nicer to work with. Okay, well, that's it. That's all I had for you today, folks. So, uh, yeah, the question for you guys to answer is, do I go with analog or do I go with digital? Digital is definitely going to be more precise. Analog I love the aesthetic. Okay, let me know in, in the uh, comments, guys, which you think looks better and which you think I should use. Maybe there's two questions there. All right, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.